front. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Joshua chapter 1. I want to take a, a few weeks and just look at some areas that I think will uh, be an encouragement to us. You know, there's, there's things we face in, in life um, that are personal to ourselves that uh, can sometimes be a real challenge. And as well, just serving the Lord is a challenge, you know, trying to witness to people and all that. And we need, uh, we need to have encouragement from the Lord. Joshua was told to be strong. Uh, one of the messages that uh, Moses had for him back in Deuteronomy, uh, he gave Joseph a, a charge and said, be strong and have a good courage. And uh, that was the same thing that the Lord said here in Joshua chapter 1 uh, to Joshua. Uh, we see in verse 1 that it's, it's the Lord speaking. And then verse 5, he says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and have a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. The same word in Hebrew that's, that's translated uh, be strong is also sometimes uh, translated uh, be encouraged. It's an inter interesting thing how that, how that works out. Uh, and you know, our strength and our courage comes from the Lord. That's, that's so important. Uh, it's not something that we just have to draw on from ourselves. And as he talks there in, in Joshua chapter 1, one of the main things that encourages us is God's word. You know, Joshua knew this is what God has said. You know, he'd spoken to Moses. He spoke to Joshua. So when you know it's the, the word of the Lord, you can say, well, that's, that's the way I need to go. And we also have God's presence. You know, he said to Joshua, I'll be with you. And verse 5, verse 9. And uh, you know, that's, that's a promise that we have. And uh, I really want us to look uh, this evening in uh, Genesis chapter 18. That's just by way of introduction there. But in Genesis 18, there's two questions. And I think if you know the answers to these two questions, it will really encourage you. The first one, God asks Abraham. The second one, Abraham asks God. <laughs> and uh, both are, are good questions. Genesis 18, verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Evidently, in, uh, physically, the, the situation they had in those days was the men would talk, and the ladies would be in another room listening. And uh, so Sarah wasn't actually in the room with them, but she was hearing. And, uh, you know, God had told them they would have a child. It had been many years already. And uh, it says there in um, verse 11, Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Now, she was past childbearing. So she thought, well, that's, that's it. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. And verse, verse 12, it says, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I'm waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And then the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Uh, of course, later on she said, oh, I didn't laugh. <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, God was asking a question here. Here was something that he told them. And he then asked the question, is anything too hard for God? Uh, would Sarah have a child? Uh, you know, to her, it just made her laugh. She said, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you probably had situations like that where somebody's made some suggestion. You think, man, that's, that's pretty ridiculous. Um, and, you know, in our, in our own lives, there's things that come up, and they're not always laughing matters, uh, but a lot of times there's things we just think, oh, there's, there's no, no hope, no solution. 
Uh, I've spoken to people about, for instance, their, their marriage. And, you know, there's, there's always hope uh, that it can be restored, you know. But I've, I've talked to some people and they said, oh, that'll, that'll never happen. You know, in, in a sense, it's like Sarah, <laughs> you know. Maybe it's a, I wonder what kind of a laugh it was, you know. Maybe a bitter laugh or something. Uh, but, you know, we, we need to realize that uh, our, our God is not limited like, like we are. Uh, sometimes with our children or, you know, there are just a lot of things in life where we think, oh, that's, that's never going to happen. Uh, but we need to see the difference between God's will and God's ability. There are things that won't happen. You know, there's things God's going to just say, no, that's, that's not going to happen. And uh, we don't always understand, you know, the why and the wherefore. Um, you know, God might not do it, but we need to be encouraged. God can. We need to understand that. And this, this, I think, is just a really basic uh, truth for us to, to keep in mind. Um, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Well, the answer is no. Now, there are things God won't do. <laughs> now, there's things God can't do, but there's nothing that's too hard for the Lord. Don't doubt God's abilities. And that's, that's we've, we've got to have our faith in the Lord, not in our circumstances. There's another area to consider, and it's interesting that it, it, it's also in Genesis 18. Genesis 18, verse 25. I'll just read the last uh, part of it. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Now, this is Abraham talking to God this time. And the situation is Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, it's interesting that the Lord goes right from talking to Abraham and Sarah to Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. And, uh, you know, what a, what a wicked place. And he's, he's told Abraham, I'm going to destroy that place. And Abraham says, well, what about all the righteous people there? <laughs> you know, if there's 50, you know, you know the story, and he works his way down to, what, what's the last one, I think, 10? Um, and the point here is this. Don't doubt God's character. You know, you'll, you'll meet people a lot of time, unsaved people, who will say, oh, yeah, I asked God to do this, and he didn't do it. So I don't believe in him, him, him anymore. They doubt God's character. They doubt God's strength, what, you know, whatever side of that it is. You know, as Christians, we need to be careful. I don't have all the answers in all of this. Life is, can be a little bit complicated, but uh, we need to just have a real basic belief in our God. Uh, our God is, is great, and he's able, and our God is good, and his intentions are always right. Uh, it's interesting here in that phrase, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? To me, the most important word there is judge. <laughs> he is the judge. Uh, he, he is the one who is, uh, sets the standard, uh, sets the rewar reward, sets the punishment. And particularly, we know as, as Bible believers that God is righteous. Uh, there's so many verses you can look at on that. I'll, I'll read a couple. Psalm 119 has quite a few. Psalm 119, verse uh, 137. Remember one of our Sunday school teachers said if the kids would memorize Psalm 119, he'd give them $50. He still got his $50. <laughs> <laughs> um, not, not that it, somebody couldn't do it. Psalm 119, verse 137 says... Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. There's many of these. Verse, uh, the second one, the next one. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. Uh, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Uh, another one's Psalm 145, verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. I mean, it's over and over. Uh, we know from Scripture God is righteous, and we need to believe that. Uh, don't let circumstances, don't look at circumstances and think you know more than God. God knows what he's, what he's doing. Now, their setting was Sodom. Their life was affected by the sin around them. Um, now, for whatever reasons, Lot had chosen that area, and then he ended up living in Sodom. And it affected his family. It affected him. There, there's a portion of Scripture in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. Let me just read a 
fair few verses here. Yet, without this portion of Scripture, you might think that Lot was an unrighteous man. But God tells us something about Lot in 2 Peter chapter 2. And he gives us a whole string of things here. 2 Peter 2 verse 4. He starts with the, the demons. He says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah. Uh, it's uh, 2 Peter 2 verse 5 now. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And here's the point. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. You see all the examples he gave? The fallen angels, uh, the world at the flood, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and then he, he spe specifically pulls out Lot. You know, Lot had been affected by the choices he'd made. He chose to live there, and, and it, the Bible says it vexed his righteous soul from day to day. And, you know, there's, there's going to be times in our life, if we're not careful, that the world will vex our souls and uh, cause us real, uh, real problems. But, you know, the other thing that happens, you need to keep this in mind as well, God is going to be judging the wicked. And if we live in Sodom, it's going to affect us. <laughs> and, folks... Um, I know the name of our town is Brisbane, but it could be called Sodom. <laughs> you know, it, there's a lot of wickedness around, isn't there? Now, who'd have thought that we would be facing the things that we are in, in our day and age? You know, most of what we get upset about when we have problems were the things that Lot had to leave behind when he left Sodom. You know, the reason he went there is because he chose that land. It was beautiful. Oh, I'll, I'll take that. Didn't do him much good, did it? <laughs> he had to leave it behind. Uh, some people think it's the Dead Sea now. Um, his business, wh whatever that was. You know, we get pretty uh, upset if our business is in trouble, but he had to just walk away from it. Uh, his house. You know, they, they probably had a TV show about how he'd done up his house, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, some of his children ended up his wife uh, got left behind. His doctor that knew all about him, he, he was gone. His retirement plan, I mean, you could go on and on, couldn't you? All the things that affect us, he had to just walk away from them. But we need to understand, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? God always does right. And uh, our setting is this time and this place. Um, we're going to be affected by the sins of others. We're going to be affected by God's judgment on others. Uh, I think many times some of these fires and floods and things are, uh, you know, God's trying to get people's attention. And very rarely do people say, oh, maybe we should pray and ask God, God's help. Um, we're going to be affected by God's judgment on their, their sins. But the answer to the question, shall not the judge of all the earth do right, is yes. God will always do right. Now, you may not understand it. I may not understand it. I don't think Abraham and Sarah understood it. <laughs> I don't think Lot understood it, you know. Uh, but we shouldn't doubt God's character. Uh, we don't have to doubt his ability, and we don't need to doubt his character. God is righteous. God is able. And, you know, those two things, if you'll just keep that in mind, don't let everything else get in the way. Just keep that in mind, and it will really encourage you. Your God is able. Your God is good. Romans 8, 28, he says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. <laughs> his purpose. I mentioned there's a, a film that's going to be shown called Tortured for Christ. Here's a man who spent 14 years in prison because of his faith. And God gave him a prison ministry. He said when he, when he left there, he felt like he was leaving his ministry. 
Uh, you know, we, we just don't know, but we do know about God, that God is good and God is great. Uh, God has the ability and the right to judge, and we can trust him uh, to do it right. We all at some point will lose a loved one. And, and you wonder, you know, maybe they're, you're not sure if they're saved. Or you think pretty sure sometimes they're not saved. But, you know, we can trust that God will do right by them. We know God will do right. And that's all we can ask. Uh, you'll, you'll be encouraged when you know and believe the answers to those two questions. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Yes. <laughs> and... Uh, I think this is just a real simple means of, of encouraging ourselves in the Lord. Uh, you can trust the Lord in your areas of need. Uh, nothing's too hard for Him. He'll always do right. Uh, you can trust the Lord as you witness to the lost. You know, that's, that's a difficult area. Nothing's too hard for Him. He'll always do right. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a strange thing as you try and witness to people. Uh, sometimes the people you think would listen won't. Sometimes the people you think wouldn't listen do. <laughs> and you just never know. We just need to be faithful to the Lord. Right. Uh, we are not always going to understand the details, but it's still true. Uh, don't fight Him. Trust Him. Uh, so just a very simple message tonight. Uh, these two questions and, and the answers. Uh, we need to believe that God is good and God is great. That, that's about as simple as you can get, isn't it? <laughs> you know, that's a prayer we teach our children. God is good. God is great. Thank you for the food we ate. <laughs> uh, any comments or, or questions before we uh, go to prayer?